Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is Ultimate General Civil War. And before I get into the next episode of the Confederate campaign, I wanted to go over real quickly. There was a small update to the game. And you can see that right here. It's a .92. And uh, there's just a couple of minor changes. And you can see those right here in front of you. A slight rebalance of the easy setting. A uh, fixed unit selection uh, fix uh, when you hold down the control key to select multiple units. Um, a problem with the army size pool and the AI. Um, fixed issue with weapons and training not fully connected with the new intelligence service mechanics. Now you'll notice an AI uh, to have training and weapons variety much more accurately based on the intelligence service training and armory info. Fixed core indication in the Battle of Everettsville that showed two less units than those actually given to the player and uh, fixed a few unit text problems that were reported. So the uh, most important thing probably from this update is what's right here, and it says the full release is approaching. Thank you for your continuous help, and we really hope you enjoy the game. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this is the Battle of First Winchester, which is fought in uh, May of 1862. There was actually a, a previous battle fought in March of 1862 that is known as the Battle of Kernstown. Um, the only reason I know so much about that battle is uh, because I had a, a great great uncle who was with the 1st West Virginia Infantry Company C along with two of his brothers uh, and he was uh, his name was Fred Stillwagon and he was actually killed at the Battle of Kernstown in uh, March of 1862. Winchester was a strategic town because it was located at the uh, basically at the northern entrance to the Shenandoah Valley and the Shenandoah Valley was of great strategic importance to the Confederacy. Uh, it was actually known as the breadbasket of the Confederacy because so much of what supplied their nation with food came from that area. And so that's why you had so much fighting going on in the Shenandoah Valley, especially in 1862. Uh, you had Jackson's Valley Campaign, which is basically what we're going to be taking on here in these next few battles. It's what really where Stonewall Jackson made a name for himself as a commander. So uh, what we're going to do here is... Uh, I believe we're basically at about even odds with the Union. Both sides have got somewhere around 12,000 men. Uh, so the object here is to take the town. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a few units along with my artillery up here. Uh, try to engage him, and I'm guessing he's probably in these woods here. But the majority of my force I'm going to send on a long, uh, kind of typical Stonewall Jackson type maneuver here and go all the way around and come up and take it from the rear. And that's going to take every bit of the amount of time that I have available to me in this campaign or in this battle to make that maneuver. And my guys are going to be pretty tired by the time I get there. But I think, at least in the past, obviously the AI is a little different now. But in the past, that worked pretty well. So we'll see if it, it still does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring these guys right here. I'm going to bring these 10-pounders and these 24-pounders up. And then everybody else is going to come down the other way. I really don't need these supplies. Not for a two-and-a-half-hour battle. And we'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Let me make sure everybody's moving. Okay, I got one unit of skirmishers that isn't. All right. We're going to make our first contact here. A couple units of skirmishers. Get around these woods.
All right, we're coming under his artillery fire now. I'm going to hold these skirmishers right here just to cover my flanks as I bring these units in and around. All right, and then my attacking force will start shifting them over here. Getting awfully dangerously close to his artillery now. So I'm going to move these guys back. I'm going to start running these guys just for a little while. Because I don't want to be too late in getting into position. check on their condition. Alright, we're going to slow down now because I don't want conditioning to be an issue. All right, we're going to speed things up along a little bit here. Haha, <laughs> he tried to sneak in when he saw my guys going that way. My skirmishers caught him in the open, though. All right. Let's catch what's happening here real quick. We've got his cavalry surrounded on three sides over here. 
Now I'm going to send these skirmishers up and hit them in the rear. So these guys are going to take some casualties, but they're occupying his army so I can do what I need to do. Alright, my force is just about in position. We'll go ahead and start moving them up. Drop these guys back. It doesn't look like anybody's home here. Oh, we forgot a brigade. I'm going to go ahead and send this Virginia brigade up to deal with these guys. North Carolina Brigade, you're gonna have to run. We gotta, we gotta charge these guns. They're gonna get one shot of canister into my face here, but hopefully no more than that. All right, now we're just going to try and inflict some casualties best we can here. Get my general up. We're going to keep waiting right there on the objective. Ah, they got hit by that artillery. Not cool. But now they're hitting back. Got some nice little areas of crossfire going on here right now. Alright, Whiting, you just hang tight where you are. 
His units are isolated all over the place. Come on, guys. You're taking too many casualties. Charge in there and take those guns out. Move, move, move. Come on. Ah, no, 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 Sims, you stay put. North Carolina Brigade's gonna be toast here in a second because this battery's gonna reload and take out another 100 men. And I can't control them. There we go. Move, move, move. There you go. Uh, we just got 20 minutes left. Alright, we'll speed this thing up to the end now. It's really just about how many how many casualties can we cause here in the last few minutes. North Carolina Brigade lost some men there. They're being routed now. But they did their jobs. And actually, if they can recover here, they're going to nab some supplies for me at the last second. If they can recover. I don't know if they're going to, though. At least not that soon. Come on, guys. Retreat right into those supplies. Don't fire. Grab them. Come on. No, we're gonna wait. We're gonna we're gonna grab these supplies first, and then we'll stop the battle. Come on. I know you're exhausted. There you go. Now let's finish the battle. Okay. So I actually outnumbered him slightly. Double the casualties. That's what we like to see every time. Only 1,500. I'll take that for a small battle. Grab 5,000 supplies there at the end. Grab some Sharps 1855s, a couple of various other guns. Grab five more 12-pounder howitzers. Uh, nothing in the way of officers to report. So that's what we like, a fairly uneventful small battle. Now we get to two that are slightly larger in uh, th these two Valley Campaign fights. Uh, let's see, the Confederates were victorious at first Winchester, and General History Guy is threatening to flank us. I'm sorry this happened. We must withdraw north and fight him another day. Um, so we can see now his army, 67 to 72,000, is what we'll probably currently be looking at facing at Gaines Mill. That's not a problem. We should be able to handle that. Uh, training army, those are still fairly low. But I don't have a lot to compare it to yet, so I don't know if that's good or not. Um, let's see here. Cross Keys, then Port Republic. These are battles fought in back-to-back -back days with basically the same Confederate army. Um, so we'll look at Cross Keys and what we'll be able to take into that one. So we can take 10 brigades into that one. Facing currently 18,000 Union soldiers. Of course, that may change a little bit depending on what I do here. But I'm not going to touch some of these brigades. I think I'll switch these two here. Okay. Um, hmm. Not sure if I want to go army organization here. All right. This will allow me current army strength during battle, which is something I've been wanting to have. Because that kind of, I mean, I know some folks will say, well, what are you bothering spending your money on reconnaissance for? 
it, it affects my strategy when I know how many enemy soldiers are on the battlefield because you can't always see all of them. So um, I like to have that information. It's just a personal preference. Everybody has their own preferences about how they play and what matters to them. I'm going to go veteran here because these guys are about to hit two-star status. So are these ones. All right, um, just want to go over something real quick. I did go into the armory and buy up some more um, of these skirmisher units. So now I'm up to 142 of the Whitworth te telescopic sites. You have to have at least 150 to start a unit with them. Uh, and I've also got 380 of the regular Whitworth. So uh, I'm a little nervous about deploying a unit with those just because of the rumors I've heard about what happens to the uh, enemy scaling when you have those in the field. So I'm... I've been a little hesitant to put those into the field, so I'm still debating that to decide whether or not I want to actually do that. All right, so uh, there's 10 brigades. That's probably what I'll be going with into this fight is these 10-pounders, these 24-pounders. Um, I'll have to look because if I'm... Any battle where I'm going to be on the defensive, I'll use the uh, howitzers, I'll use the smoothbores. And actually, I am defensive on this one, so that may be... Oh, I remember this battle. This is when you sit in the edge of the woods and you wait for him to come to you. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do, is I'll probably go ahead and use the smoothbores instead in this one. I've got lots of those, so... In fact, I may go ahead and swap these out for now, for Napoleon's. Um, just because I think that'll be more helpful in this coming battle. So, uh, wrap it up right there. I'm going to go ahead and put some supply in. Uh, so, with me up, up, upgrading my army now, let's see what we'll be facing from the enemy in this battle. So now, now it's 19,716 because I, I uh, up, upped mine, so that scaled his as well. Uh, I'm going to have, let's see, uh, in 10 brigades, 8 of which will be this. So I'll have uh, 16,000 plus 2 batteries. So I'm going to be outnumbered, but I'm on the defensive. I'm not too worried. I think I should be fine there. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, so as always, I welcome any and all input, whatever you have to say, whatever your thoughts are. Um, I welcome those. Uh, let me know what your strategy was for that battle, First Winchester. How did you handle it? What did the casualties look like? Uh, we can all learn from one another. And uh, we will be back with another episode here fairly soon. Thanks for watching.